Hello and welcome to Fresh Face Comics, the comic book podcast where a lifelong comic book reader guides his friend through the world of comics for the first time. My name is Joey Morgan, the aforementioned lifelong reader. With me as always is Jacob Licklider, the aforementioned newbie. Making Thor a blonde is a mistake. How so? Uh, in Norse mythology, Thor uh, is always, like, always described as having red hair. But then they would never, then they never would have cast Chris Hemsworth, and and people would not have their eye candy. So this is true. I mean, come on, yeah, it's it's yeah. Anyway, today we're talking Thor. We're talking Thor by Jason Aaron. This is specifically Volume One, uh, the first trade of uh, of Jason Aaron's run on Thor, uh, the God Butcher, the first five issues. Um, so, getting into this, uh, non spoilers as always. Uh, what is Thor the God Butcher about? And I guess also, what is your history with Thor as a character? So my history with Thor... um, I obviously had seen the Avengers movies, and I had seen uh, the first Thor film. And I might have actually seen bits of Thor the Dark World. Okay. I I don't... I don't know. Um, Again... We'll talk about it because we did adapted material. We did sort of did adapted material. We did, material yeah. yeah. We, we came up with a plan for adapted material. Yes. <laughs> so. so we can be ready to cover some other things next time. Yeah. Um, Thor as a character, I always thought, you know, I, I enjoyed. He was fine. Like, um, like I enjoyed the first Thor movie. I, I enjoyed Chris Hemsworth as the character. He's fun in the role. Um I, it's funny, this is, this is, this is sort of the mythological bent to Marvel, I guess. Um, I'm actually not an expert on Norse mythology, um, at, like, at all, uh, because I grew up with the Percy Jackson books, and those were Greek mythology, and Mm. certain, let's just say certain quote-unquote experts of Norse mythology, certain pseudo-Norse circles are not circles you'd like to fall into, shall we say? Uh, I wasn't to, aware of this. <laughs> uh, let's just say a certain party that ruled Germany from 1933 to 1945 oh, okay. appropriated I'm... quite a lot of Norse imagery. <laughs> Fair enough. And Fair it's, enough. yeah. Um, um, but yeah, I... Oddly enough, what made me excited about doing the character was your Twitter thread. Oh, okay. Um, That's fair. Yeah, you know, that was one of those things, too, was that, like, I I had really read Thor comics, and I was like, you know, Jason, I hear Jason Aarons is good. Um, and I think also Thor Love and Thunder was close to coming out at the time that I read it, so I was like, you know what, let me see what it's kind of based on, I'll check it out, and this, it was my first Thor comic. And I came out of it, like, giving it a near-perfect score. I was like, "That's that was just one of the best comics I've ever read. And I, I imagine you're referring to that. <laughs> yes, yes. Also... <laughs> I also knew about this run specifically that it was controversial, quote unquote. Only um, controversial in that, like you know, your your comic book resource article headlines pissed people off. I guess yes. um, that was about um, it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'd heard, I'd heard, I had heard things. Um, I was again, I was when I was very excited to do it when. When, when, when you, would, you would announce this last time. Um, I also was very curious to see, because we were just doing the first five issues. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and... so, so for those watching, importantly, uh, we're, this is not a complete story arc. We're completing that story arc next time. So we're doing six through 11 next time. Uh, so it'll be the first 11 issues of the, of the Thor run. That'll be these across these two episodes. Um, so yeah, so sorry, go, go, go on with your point. I just... I'm glad we're taking it slow, because... With this Marvel block, we've done a lot of very big books. It's true. Um, <laughs> and this also feels like a story that you want to take slow, because you say it's not a complete story, but in a way, it kind of is. Like It, it ends in the way that a lot of those like movies that split bo- single books into two parts end, I think. Yes. <laughs> you know, yes. Like that exact kind of cliffhanger. Um, but yeah, it, it does tell like sort of its own story in, this, in these first couple issues. Um, that I'll be curious to see what you think just as its own story uh, as we get into the conversation here. But um, yeah. Yes. Uh, 
There are also a lot of ways to collect Thor by Jason Aaron. There are the omnibus volumes. Uh, there are these that we're reading from. We're reading from the complete collection versions um, by uh, Thor by Jason Aaron complete collection. I think there are four volumes they split it into. I think there are, um, there are four or five. Yeah, and so there's that. There's also the versions that are like Thor, God of Thunder, just for this first series that are split into two volumes, which was how I first read it uh, digitally. There are the individual trades. There are so many ways to read this run. I I recommend go with the Omnis or these complete collections because this is one of those. uh, This is one of those runs where marvel rebooted the book a lot like yeah yeah so complete collection and, and the omnis yeah are the ones that put all of those different titles together um and so yeah so it, it's yeah like i said there are a ton of different ways to read it it's popular for a reason we're gonna get into that in a moment but first i think let's do some twitter questions yes yes so actually let's start off on discord because yes uh, yeah um our friend andrew uh has questions for us uh says jacob what were your impressions of thor before you read this comic are they different after reading it well okay i will say after reading it i kind of get some of the complaints of post 2015 mcu making him more of a i don't want to say making him more of a comedic character because he although that is definitely what happened <laughs> but like even before even before like, he was still comedic and like yeah but in the way that in the way that like young thor as he because okay so this book trying to say as non-spoiler as possible it focuses on thor in a couple of different time periods so like the younger thor acts a lot like the that first movie thor you know like in, in the way that like he's he's comedic in those um in those moments i should say um so it's there were comedic moments, but more in that in Thor's eccentricity as a character. Yeah, um, um, not the overall I, tone of the films being ex- uh, being comedic. I also think part of the problem is just the MCU, and this is sort of a problem with a lot of its char- a lot of its characters. Current, uh, they um, they tend to stagnate. Mm, yeah, they just kind of stop at one point. I will say, Thor is in one of those interesting cases where like they do something actually for me, at least personally, I found the, the ending of love and thunder, especially interesting for Thor's character arc, considering his four movies. Um, but yeah, like, especially for, for my most hated fiend, uh, Ragnarok. Um, yeah, he just, he just kind of stops. He stops dead from that moment that like, I don't know. I would say personally from where like Thor, the dark world ends and maybe kind of in end game. Like it's just, he just kind of stops developing he stops moving as a character and it's really fucking annoying um yeah and it's it's i think that's uh, i think that's th- that highlights just a larger mcu problem yeah um of i don't want to act like the mcu was ever like super high art but it had some moments <laughs> gone on it's sort of it, it's sort of homogenized into mm. being this this very controlled, at least in terms of narrative, like mm. very controlled. I will say it's something they're they're fi- it's something that I'm personally liking about a lot of the MCU, and I feel like a lot of these Marvel episodes just turn to MCU discussions, and I feel bad about that. Um, but it is important to bring up, you know, with with how a lot of people. Well, the MCU is also like it. It's how most people know these characters. Like it's it's kind of the MCU is superheroes in the public eye currently like yeah that's, yeah that's kind but of I, what it is but i will say for me personally i it's it's something that i'm liking more about the post infinity saga of things like phase four and five um is that a lot of the stories do feel more individual it's a lot of those things that i liked about very early mcu is just like they, they didn't feel like they all had to work towards the exact same goal it wanted it to work more like comics do in that they tell their own individual stories that sometimes converge. Like, I don't know. I I prefer that personally. And it's something that current MCU is, is a little bit better at. I, I I believe. Yeah. Um, But it's also, it's also the trouble of being a big franchise owned by Disney. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah. You got, it's like, you know, you could, uh, you could just really let it go and not have like, fully commit to letting people tell stories with these characters and you don't have to be building to the next big billion dollar movie um yeah um um 
Shit, where were we? Oh yeah, your impressions of Thor after <laughs> after reading after. the book. Oh, yeah. oh god, I think I fell in love with him. Like, my, hmm. I, I don't. I, I think it's just because it's Jason Aaron. What, what's gonna happen is 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 we're eventually gonna get through the Jason Aaron run completely and go on to some other run. I'm sure. Yeah, and I'm gonna be immediately disappointed because probably it, Aaron brings. Here's the thing: I don't think he makes the character especially like relatable. He doesn't. I, I don't think at least, you know, it's just, there's a, there's a lot of heart going into the way he's writing the character. And, um, it's, he it's, makes it, it very it, human. Yeah. I'd argue. Yeah, definitely. In a, in a very interesting way. Um, especially, especially with how this opens and especially with like the really quite dark themes we're doing. Um, mm-hmm. there was like, it's like a three or four page sequence. Um, I want to say in issue three um, that just kind of hits you um, with how dark it feels. Um, uh, it's one that like, I know for love and thunder, cause they include, I think I want to say they included this in like the trailer for love and thunder. Like it culminates in, 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 in a, sh- in a shot that basically love and thunder took wholesale um I'm trying to think of what shot you're talking about it's it's just thor is discovering what what gore has been doing oh okay i th- yes like, I think I know what you mean. yep yeah yeah and it just it just hits like it, it, partially because it's, it's it's all done through narration um mm-hmm. um yeah it's th- this first story is especially effective it's i i think at least there's a reason it's really say, Go ahead. It helps. It, I think it, it. It's weird because I, I some of my favorite stories that we've done are ones where you get a good supporting cast. Mm-hmm. But there's this like is, this isn't really a story with a supporting cast. I mean, there are other characters here, but it's a Thor's story. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Um. It's it's yeah. It's it's almost exclusively just about Thor. Um. And it's also interesting that this was this was part of the the Marvel Now era stuff, which is sort of like Marvel's next DC thing, where they um they they sort of rebooted all their books to number one, um, just to try to sell them more. And so you know a lot of these were like meant to be like jumping on points for the characters. Um, and I find it interesting that this is the direction chosen for Thor. Um, and th- yeah, and it's it's the reason I think that it grabbed so many people at the time. It's um, and also in 2015 when the MCU was about to enter its biggest stage of popularity. I feel. Um, oh yeah, because that would have been right right when Age of Ultron was coming. Age of Ultron around. and right before Civil War. Um, yeah, it's it was it was a big time for the MCU, and uh, selling a book like this was um was was bold i think genuinely um moving on to andrew's second question for me uh joey where would you place thor in your ranking of marvel heroes it's interesting because in general i don't i don't think i love thor um this the jason era run being where i mostly know the character from um it thor is one of those characters that i think de- entirely depends on who's writing it if we're talking about just the jason Aaron version of the character he's way up there but in general not especially high probably um for me personal but yeah um twitter questions now the actual twitter questions um our friend kian says uh at kian quark says i have nothing of note to ask so instead i leave one leave this one comment mind goblin moving on uh, moving on indeed uh our friend jamie at jamie underscore season seven says it's peak i'm sure it won't have a crap adaptation and i'm sure the writer won't ha- later have a disappointing mid as hell avengers run <laughs> um i'm sure those are also th- things definitely jamie yeah totally um yeah nothing nothing disappointing about the adaptation and i've only heard not great things about his avengers run which is a shame because i've i've read a fair few jason aaron things and um yeah, just kind of sucks. Yeah, you can't. You, I think writers are allowed to have off days. Yeah, yeah, but it seems like he's had a lot of off days <laughs> with Avengers, so I don't know. I think that I think he's still on Avengers right now. I don't keep up with a lot of current Marvel things, but uh, um, I think he's still on Avengers at the moment. Um, at the time of recording, that is. 
Uh, let's see, our friend English Giraffe at English underscore Giraffe says, haven't read this one, but I've read Aaron's other works, uh, other works, uh, other work on Avengers, and I found that run to be under, really underwhelming. But I hope this run is good once I get the chance to pick it up. Uh, yeah, if you're only if you're only really familiar with uh, his Avengers, then yeah, uh, might might I strongly recommend his Thor run, uh, most definitely. Um, I've also recently read his Star Wars run, or I am currently reading his Star Wars run uh, from 2015, which actually, now that I think about it, he was, I guess he was doing it at the same time as this. Um, yeah, he was just kind of firing on all cylinders at the time. He's He, he was doing great work, so there's that. Yeah. Uh, our friend Rules Panda at Joey Could Read This says, Can you finish this for me? I don't know this song, so I'm not going to try to sing it. This is Cross I... the Rainbow Bridge of Asgard Where the Booming Heavens Roar. I don't know it. I was going to try to look this up, but I didn't. I, I, right, I, I meant to look it up too, and I just, I never did. And I just, I'm sorry. I've disappointed you at Joey can read this. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> um, lastly, we have a set of questions from our friend Mason at the GD256, recent guest on the podcast. Check out our Planet Hulk episodes. So, uh, first question, genuine question if you know, how many liberties does this take with North, Norse mythology? Uh, I don't know much actual North, Norse um. mythology. I know uh, it takes a lot. I know it takes a lot. Because um, largely... also, Im- importantly, the idea behind the story of the God Butcher is that it stretches well beyond Norse gods. So there's yeah. that. But but I, I also know that like Norse mythology in the Marvel Universe isn't close to a lot of Norse mythology. Um, probably because... I, when when Stan Lee uh, was, I want to, did Lee create Thor with Jack Kirby? I believe so. Yeah, uh, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby were creating this. They weren't really making it Norse. So I, a lot of liberties are taken as far as I know. Um, but I'm also not an expert on Norse mythology. <laughs> Understandable. Uh, so... Go, go ask an academic. Go, go, don't, don't ask. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't ask us podcasters. Um, uh, Mason, second question is Thor okay? <laughs> you know, probably not. After probably this, not. Pro- probably not. Oh boy. Um, yeah, no, definitely not. Um, number three, best side character in the Thor run. Uh, as we already sort of mentioned, there's not much of a supporting cast here. Um, I have a feeling there's going to be though, because although I, mean, I guess. I guess if you consider like the present day Thor as being the main one, I guess I could say I do love the other time period Thors in this as supporting characters. Yeah, there are three Thors. Yeah. Um, so I love them. Um, his fourth question uh, and last question for today. How long could Thor plank? Probably a really long time. Yeah. Like I, I would assume a really long time. Probably as long as Chris Hemsworth. Pro- yeah. Yeah. Maybe longer because, you know, Maybe actual longer. God. So there's that. Anyway, that was a weird one. And on, uh, <laughs> shall we get into uh, spoilers? Yeah, yes, Let's jump yes, into yes. full spoilers as always. Um, if you want to check us out in other places, our socials and everything will be linked in the description below. Uh, we'll have link yes. trees and everything down there. Um, also, next time on the podcast, you don't need to worry about episode reveals or anything. Uh, it's it's just volume two. It's called God Bomb. It's issues six through eleven of Thor, the God of Thunder, and. Um, can check that out so yeah that'll be coming out in two weeks time as as do all of our episodes come out every other monday uh so that'll be our last episode for january so yeah and and our last marvel episode yeah so. yeah we'll, we'll be back into dc for a bit next time uh or not next time but the time after next time episode 61 through 70 now thanks to you Jacob. yes yes I... um we'll talk more about that next time uh but uh but yeah uh just keep keep an eye out keep an eye out yeah keep, keep an, ear an eye out, out. um uh, and I think that, uh, yeah, I guess that's that's uh, that's it. Let's move into spoilers now. So yeah. we only have five issues to cover here. I imagine this will be a pretty short episode, <laughs> but that's okay. It, it could be. It could be also be super long. Who knows? It could, yeah. Who knows how long we're going to talk about these things. Luckily, we um, don't have a guest to create the chaos. That's true. That's true. Um, all right. So let's uh, open up on Thor, God of Thunder, issue number one. Um, first of all, I do love the connecting covers. Here for yes. these, uh, for these also, first can couple we, issues. Can we talk about Esed Ribic's art? Oh, like, can we talk about it? By all means. <laughs> first off, how the hell did this man make this much art on a monthly schedule? Right, yeah. He takes issue six off, but then he does the rest of the arc from seven through eleven. And uh, yeah, it's, it's absolutely insane. <laughs> like, like, oh, it is, it is watercolored basically 
It adds this mythic quality. His backgrounds especially are gorgeous. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah and, it's, you know, just, it's, oh, it's lovely. Plus, there are the cover, covers by, uh, by uh, uh, Dean White and Ives Forcina, I think is how you would pronounce that last name. Um, yeah. But they're the covers. The covers are lovely. Um, oh, no, yeah. they're, the col- they're the colorists. What's up? They're the colorists. Oh, shit, you're right. Wait, wait, wait. So who are the... Oh, the covers are also... Uh, it's not yeah. Right. Okay, yeah, that's right. Duh. I, was, Duh. I read color, and I thought I read cover. It's early. We're recording earlier than usual. I, I'm going to blame it on that. So, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll blame that. Um, anyway, getting into the actual issue, um, we start off in 893 AD um, in Iceland. In Iceland, and this is introducing us to our our first Thor, first of three Thors. Uh, call him Young Thor for the sake of simplicity, I suppose. Um, he is living in this uh, this this village at the time, being a pompous young god that he is. Um, when the night is broken by uh by the murder of do we know who this person actually is I'm not sure we... yeah so someone someone not even from the village they say no, um I mean, well the idea is that this is a uh, potentially a native american deity mm. um which I don't. I don't know much about spiritual practices of indigenous peoples, so I don't know if it's accurate to say they would have deities. But the idea is that this is a beheaded god. Yeah, and Thor looks into its eyes. This uh, th- th- this head that sort of rolls in here, pretty much, and um, and is like, "All right, no problem. I'll fucking handle this." Um, also, interestingly, this is a Thor, but before the time of Mjolnir, uh, he, he carries around this axe with him um, that I know, I know has a name. I forget what it's called. Probably um, something with way too many consonants. Probably. <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, he, he decides to to go after whoever did this. Um, uh, not before giving giving this god a, a, a burial, mm-hmm. um, and. We find this old woman. To which Thor asks, to what gods do you pray, old woman? And she says, all of them. Um, and then we cut yes. over to present day in deep space, the planet Indigar. Um, as uh, Thor, Thor arrives among these people. Uh, present day, I'm assuming meaning 2015, obviously. Um, Thor is the, the current, the current Marvel universe. The current Thor. We'll just call him. I don't know. Regular Thor for he this. He's Thor. He's Thor. Um, but also importantly, um, uh, as he spends time among these aliens here, um, he's hearing similar stories um, of, uh, of 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 dead gods. Uh, right? Or is this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um and uh so he 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 spends some time among these people. He um he There's a lot of here's the thing, there's a lot of really good dialogue that what Aaron does such a good job, especially with young and and and, and young Thor and regular Thor, like our our, our current Thor, mm-hmm. is really making you feel the difference. Um because their designs are quite similar. Um, yeah, yeah. Like, like the actual progression of the design of Thor is 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 really smart, um, mm-hmm. uh, and then you get to old Thor and he's he's Thor with very bushy beard, very old. Um, yeah, the idea is he he looks like Odin in, in his yes. old age, which is cool. Um, but yeah, so Thor, uh, present Thor, goes to um, uh, goes to this city in the it, sky. It seems so um, this world has no gods. Is the idea. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it's like, well, it's like, wait, where? Wait, why? Well, every world has had some sort of a god, um, and and so, you know they had a city. They, you know, we had gods at one point, but they just disappeared. Mm-hmm. The Thor goes, you know, to this giant city in the sky and sees 
if there were gods here at some point on this planet, they are now long gone. Uh, this place is empty, and Thor eventually finds these past gods of this planet hung by chains from the ceiling. On, on, on giant meat hooks? It is a horrifying image. They have been um, butchered. Yeah. Um, and like... What's fascinating, right? So we're in spoilers. Gore the God Butcher is our is our villain. Mm -hmm. And for an arc titled Gore the God or titled The God Butcher, Aaron does this really interesting thing of not really showing gore really until the last issue. Like not in his entirety, at least. Not in his entirety. You see, you see a lot of his actions, mm -hmm. and they are depicted enough to make you squirm. Yeah. Uh, but and I, I think that's actually, you know, I think that's that's part of what makes. I, I don't think this would be nearly as effective if he was there from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Um, he, you need him off screen. Um, um. And and you you do partially because you need current Thor to be who you know who's our, our who's I, I'd argue just the, is the main point of view character. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, because this is a story that takes place largely in the present, um, especially since you know a lot of the flashbacks to young Thor. I don't want to basically kind of phase out. Feel like they they phased out by the end. Uh, I don't know. They they play a pretty important role in the last issue. Yeah, but like, like, but after that, like, I don't think we're, I don't like, if I had to predict for the next arc, we're not going to get as much, nearly as much young Thor. You um, may be surprised. Oh, okay. Uh, um, I guess now you won't be, but still. Um, so, um, as Thor is uh, still going through the city and seeing these dead gods, he is attacked by a guard dog, um, a very powerful guard dog. Um, this, uh, this like shadowy humanoid dog-like figure. Um, Really interesting design. Um, and uh, after Thor defeats it, we then go to many millennia from now in the great hall of Asgard, where we see old Thor um, alone in Asgard, it seems, um, fighting off a similar looking guard dog. Uh, and that is where the issue ends. Yeah. I want to know what you thought coming straight off of the first issue. So I, I mean, I think it's just a fantastic first issue, like mm -hmm. because we we did in between, like in the transition between Thor and Old Thor, um, you have, um, you have this line, um, the uh, this line. Of if Gore the God Butcher yet lives, it can only mean one thing. More gods are sure to die. And I think that more than anything sets the tone of what these next four issues are gonna be. Mm -hmm. Um especially since like like the old Thor stuff is really a tease of like, does does Thor fail? Is he is it's, it's are we gonna lose all these gods? Which we might, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah, I, I always found it such an interesting idea for Aaron to play with. Because um, also, you know, you're, you're, you always run the risk of writing yourself into a corner when you take a, you know, destined to live forever comic book character and try to put a permanent stamp on their future. Um, but, yeah. Aaron is, but Aaron isn't just doing that when he writes old Thor. It's, it's more playing with the idea of where gore as a character is going to end up you know if, if we're trying to fight him in the present day and he's still a very clear threat in the future um what does that mean for where the story is going um and also of course where these first five issues end uh makes thor it makes old thor uh a bit more of a separate character in this rather than here's Thor's literal future. I think. Yeah. So. I was also reading it almost as like a possible future because. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, the end, yeah. The end of the book sort of, you'll, you'll see. I, I, won't, I won't say much going forward. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So it's, uh, it's, 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 an, it's an interesting start just because it, it tells it, it it does a lot in these 20 pages 
Um, and it tells you basically all you need to know, and it keeps it personal, um, which is something these five issues just just walk this fine line of keeping things so personal for Thor as a character because he's he's Thor, and you know they're, 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 we're not doing the supporting cast. And like the one thing I knew about this run going in was, of course, the big thing that everyone that that you know made let's just say people who like to get mad at anything that isn't a white guy in comics get very mad of course um, yeah uh but that has nothing to do with this uh this first arc yeah when, when oddly i think like truly I, I think this first arc is 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 the it, for me at least the the infinitely more iconic thing about the run um it's sort of what made people at the time you know really take this run seriously um yeah. that it came, it came out swinging like in the way it did um so yeah um anyway let's move into issue two um let's throw a fourth thor into this not quite the same um <laughs> but yeah many years ago the great weapons hall of asgard you see a young thor not quite the same young thor that we saw before um uh but yeah, uh, tr- trying to lift up Mjolnir um, potentially for the first time. It's it's a cool I, I idea. Think the idea is that it's for the first time because he's not worthy. Um, and uh, yeah. he literally yells at the hammer then and walks out and says, you know, someday, someday you will be mine. Um, and then we see our our four Thors, our, 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 four, our three Thors again. Um, you know, uh, present Thor fighting the guard dogs, um, old Thor fighting the guard dogs, and a young Thor uh, sailing out with his fellow Vikings uh, to go find out who is killing gods. Um, and young Thor is who we focus on for most of this issue, if I remember correctly, uh, getting into this. Yes. Um, I also think it's fascinating that ha- the way Aaron incorporates some recaps Mm, yeah. Here, because this is an issue number two of a of a of a brand new book, um, you know, because this is Thor, the God of Thunder, number two, not just Thor number two or uh, the Mighty Thor number two. This yeah. is <laughs> there are so many different ways to title Thor books. <laughs> there are so many different look Marvel, uh, Marvel especially does like. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna change the title ever so slightly with a different epithet. With yeah. like the amazing spider and the spectacular yep. Spider-Man. I and- swear, I was I was trying to think it like once I was like, I think every major Marvel hero has like a specific adjective assigned to them and that that, that can probably just be swapped out at any, at any time. Yeah. I mean <laughs> it's it's the mighty Thor, what the invincible Iron Man, the incredible Hulk, the amazing Spider-Man. It's fucking insane. I love it. <laughs> the uncanny X-Men. The only two yeah, yeah. that I don't think has one are the Avengers. Uh uh, uh Hang on. I'm trying to think now. There's definitely one. Is there? Is there? I mean, there there of course is is, you know, Avengers Earth Might Earth's Mightiest Heroes. I'm trying to think. That's that's a subtitle. That's 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 maybe, not uh, you know, maybe not actually. Damn. Yeah, I, I don't think the Avengers I had not thought about that thing. before. Damn. I mean, there are like different teams of Avengers, you know, because there's yes. the new Avengers, there's like West Coast Avengers, things like that. But, um, but not, but not, it's not like huh. the amazing Spider Man. Yeah. Then there are superheroes that have multiple adjectives for different books because there's Superior Spider Man and Superior Iron Man. And there's, there's Ultimate Spider Man. Yes. Uh, there's also just, sometimes they're like, we're just doing. Just the name. It's just Spider Man, or it's just Hulk. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> like. Oh man. Oh. So that's actually. <laughs> we should move on. <laughs> um, but yes, Thor is uh, going out with these Vikings to go find out what's happening to these gods. Um, and we get our for our first uh, sort of look at Gore as uh, as Gore is sort of stalking them in the night. Um, I forget. <laughs> now, you probably knew what Gore looked like before this, right? Uh, at, at the very least, what probably the MCU design, right? Yeah, I was gonna say I at least saw what Christian Bale as Gore looked like. Um, but it looks I I love this image of just mist on the waters and then this spectral like figure mm-hmm. um, with the fucking line "I smell god flesh." God flesh. Oh also, the, the lettering, 
Yeah. Oh like, man. It's not quite that same sort of like jagged lettering that like say like, you know, uh that's used for like Joker in the in the Scott Snyder run. Um but it is just like it's it's an off-putting lettering. I don't know how else to yeah. describe it. It's it's not quite that same sort of like villainous lettering you see on other villains. And, and this is a book that uses like three distinct styles of lettering. You use this for gore. Thor gets his um slightly more ornate uh serif font and then you just have the standard um sort of your standard letters yeah and i think the letter the um the letterer on this book um uh joe sabino does a really good job of making making them feel uniform Mm -hmm. if that makes sense well it's funny because i think the lettering in this book in a weird way, sort of sets a tone in and of itself. Yes, but it doesn't... It, it doesn't jaw... It, 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 sometimes doing these cool different things with the letters can jar for a reader. Mm-hmm. And I think Cough, it's, cough, Batman year one. Cough, cough. Y- yeah. <laughs> um, but, like, these are... They're, they're distinct and they're unique, but there's just this uniformity that they all... That they, they fit. They're easy, and it helps that they're easy to read, and like the differences aren't so exaggerated. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, on their hunt, uh, they come across a, a Pegasus looking god, um, that has been attacked recently. Um, or no, the Pegasus itself is not a god, it, it, it belonged to a god. Um, uh, but yes. yeah, it is. It is. It is bloodied. It is. It has been in battle. Thor takes this Pegasus and flies it uh, further to where it was um, uh, to find Gore. Gore. We, we get our first actual look at Gore here. Um, then where Gore is riding on this black horse uh, looking thing. Um, or sorry, no, no, sorry. Nope, that's not right. Nope. Coming towards them is a black horse with a headless rider. A headless rider of Chernabog the Black. Uh, which is presumably the the god we saw last time. Yeah. Um, the head of. Um, but yeah, then then Gore attacks, and also I just I like this sort of like shadowy blade it makes. Uh, he makes it's just just cool. Um, but yeah, uh, Gore attacks, beheads the fucking Pegasus, um, and uh, Thor then jumps down and and removes the headless rider from its black horse and uh, takes the horse for himself. There's this great fight between Thor and Gore, um, which I feel really stupid saying out loud right now, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've never said their names close to each other. It's weird. Um, but yeah, uh, Thor being, you know, the young brash fighter that he is, um, doesn't quite take Gore's threat seriously at first. No. Um, um, and you can kind of see why, because it's like, oh, which is, I mean, it's obviously, it's the folly of youth. This man is not worthy of his hammer. Also, he really should maybe be a little, just a little, just just a tiny bit um, cautious because this person has killed multiple gods at this point. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's, it, it's nothing to scoff at, but Thor scoffs at him nonetheless. And, um, they, uh, after this uh, this fight between them, uh, they eventually get separated. Uh, or no, sorry, just they're separated. Gore goes after him some more. Um, oh, that's right, we get that great moment where um, Gore like has Thor mostly defeated, has him stabbed through the chest, um, and as uh, Gore is delivering this great sort of monologue about all the different sort of gods he's killed, he asks Thor what he is the god of, to which he says thunder and you know lightning obviously strikes uh from above and separates them um i just yeah. love it it's great it's a, it's a really great moment and here's the thing here's the thing what this issue does is because this is basically the end of the issue there's a there's a there's there's our lead in for uh next issue with with current present thor um recalling that event uh, uh as he sees the dead gods around him um, it does such a good job of just setting up Gore as this terrifying villain. Like mm-hmm. the design is already terrifying. It's already, yeah, it's already creepy to begin with, um, and it works so well because of how how it blends into the backgrounds. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but also making Gore a threat that Thor has faced before and did not face particularly well. Um, does a great job of setting the tone for where present Thor is at when he comes across these other dead gods. Yes. Um, yeah, because the whole idea is that, you know, present Thor is just going to follow the trail of, of dead gods to find Gore. Um, and we don't, we, I think what's fascinating is we don't really fully get Gore's motivation in these five issues. Mm-hmm. We get that he wants to kill gods. We get that he has a and, and, I, and I will say, it's not a spoiler to say, we will get his actual backstory next time. Yeah. Um, um, but, it's, uh, but honestly, like, for, for now at least, because we're just taking the perspective of Thor, like, just knowing that he's a god killer is enough, like, to, yeah, to, make, and, him, to make him an actual threat. Well, and it adds sort of just this, you know, this unknowable aspect of, like, what what is his deal? Is he immortal? Is he immortal? Can he... Can Gore be killed? What what is it? So, um, I think that moves us nicely into Issue Thor, three. the God of Thunder, number three. So, I we open on on, on Omnipotent City. I'll say this: I cannot wait for you to see, to see. I I want to see your jaw drop. I want to watch it with you when you see Taika Waititi's version of Omnipotent City. Oh, <laughs> it's. It's fucking special. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm um, guessing not good special. Um, <laughs> it's it depends on what you want from those movies. <laughs> I um, mean, I, I mean, I'm going into I'm going to be going to those two expecting comedies first because <laughs> that's what Watiti largely. I don't want to say that's what he does, but like most of his work has a comedic bent. Yeah, um, but and, there's. There's good comedy and fucking I, unbearable. I, so, I will say you can I, you can still respect a filmmaker even if they have made potentially not. Oh great, yeah, I, I love yeah. Taika, Taika, Taika is a very good filmmaker. Just he, some people he, on he just, should, he just should not do fucking corporate work. Like fucking oh. let him do his weird art house shit. Like that's what he's best at. Um, anyway, but yeah, uh, Omnipotent City, Nexus of all the gods. Um, Thor. It's such so it's it's here where I have this this it's an utterly fascinating right um character beat for Thor to do to seek out knowledge. Um mm-hmm. especially especially this early on in the run when this is a run that ideally is probably being marketed to potential new readers, right? Like mm-hmm. oh, totally. this is Potential. I mean, it probably wasn't because Marvel doesn't market their books with their films true, like they should. True. But um, also, you know, Marvel now is a great opportunity for getting people who are really loving the MCU into actual comics. Um, and I don't think MCU Thor, especially at like where this is publishing and then what's come out in the MCU, I don't think that Thor would necessarily like seek knowledge like this through quote unquote proper channels if that I'll makes say, sense i'll say in in the taika waititi films thor does go to omnipotent city for knowledge it is he does not find a cranky old fairy librarian though <laughs> look <laughs> anyway i just i just find it a fascinating <laughs> character beat okay i'm trying yeah. to make oh, yeah, a point yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I just, I just, oh man, I just, oh, I fucking can't. I can't wait that one scene. I can't, um, anyway, moving on. Beware Russell Crowe. Um, uh, so we, um, Thor is seeking knowledge on Gore. Um, and again, I feel stupid saying those names next to each other. Um, Thor speaks, uh, uh, speaks of like more gods that he's found dead on various other planets and with various other people. Well, yeah, because he, he's um, remembering and it's, it's this sequence that gave me chills right um because it starts with this monologue you know uh you know he starts listing these gods it's like specifically gods that hadn't been seen for a long time um you know it's like i I, you know no one has seen them for two thousand years i find them in the embrace of the forest they loved 
I find oh. them nailed to their trees. And that isn't all I find. Um, and, you know, he finds more and more, you know, uh, there's another group of gods. They were last seen 1,200 years ago. These days, the trees are strung with gore and the air is black with flies. And when it rains, only maggots fall from the sky. Ugh. I don't good. have time to bury or burn them. Not while he's still out there. Um, Cause yeah, um, it's it, uh, Aaron knows how to do a, a a punch, and it it goes and it goes. You know, it's mm. like there's no pattern to his spree. Um, you know, what does it say about the, the gods in this universe that no one has ever cared has has ever even noticed or cared? What does it yeah. say about me? You flip the page. That that it's that fucking page. It's that two page spread as the 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 ice god, um, Falagar the behemoth. Yes, uh, the Thor I, knew. I know. I, I knew this god, and that that's the line that just like oh that mm. that that hits. Yeah, it's oh, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Thor fights off more of these black guard dogs. Um, and just screams out. He calls for the god Butcher. Um, he, he, he wishes to face him. It is at that point that we cut back to 893 AD. Uh, Thor with his Viking people uh, after his defeat, near defeat at the hands of Gore, um, uh, rallies his friends and, uh, and goes out searching once again. Uh, we go once again to the present day where first off you get your first your first uh tony stark uh actual scene with tony stark yeah the comic book character this will not actually add him to our tier list but i was i was debating i was gonna say please don't add him he's no it's two pages it's two it's, it is two pages, pages. It, he is he is there um i do I, I i'm glad he's here because i find this musing on the nature of like what makes a god from thor here I think it really only works with mm -hmm. if you have like an Avenger, especially someone like Tony. Um, yeah. Especially someone like Tony, because um, one thing I do know about Tony Stark is that he's one of those Marvel characters who is very, well, I mean, most Marvel characters are very flawed. Um, mm -hmm. He's very, you know, he's, he's one of the most mortal Marvel characters. Yeah. Um, I know one of his, which sounds like, the, I know the big famous Iron Man story is Demon in a Bottle. Which yep. is yeah, Tony's. It's it yeah, it's it's literally about a superhero and his alcoholism. Like it's yeah. um, it's fucking it's rough. Yeah, it's mm. and yeah. so and so and so directly playing Tony off of Thor in this moment. Um, you know, being one of the most mortal superheroes in in the Marvel universe. Um, is uh is especially interesting. And yeah, Thor has some great musings on the character once Tony leaves. Um. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's um, a really great moment. I'll also say, I, I didn't, I didn't know to expect again so much of Thor's fear to come across. Mm. Yeah. Oh Cause, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Gore is is something that truly rattles him. Yeah. Um, like I was expecting a more stoic character, but no, he's because we, you know, because we are these all these issues are narrated by the three Thors. Um, uh, we get so much about who Thor is. And I think it helps that we, at this point, we've really allowed Thor to stand on his own without, I'd argue, the other iconic Thor character of the time, which would be Loki. Like, Yeah, yeah. Loki doesn't show up for a while in the Aaron run, actually. Yeah, which, I mean, I hate to say good, but good. Well, yeah, um, yeah, it's it's fine. Yeah, and, well, especially because also I think, if I'm remembering rightly, I think Marvel now had its own Loki thing going on. Like, it, I think his own title. I could be wrong. Um, it, it, it's very probable because I I know Loki eventually you know gets his own title. Um, yeah, yeah, but like um, not. Yeah, I, 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 just I, just letting Thor stand on his own as a character is yeah. is really important. And I have I have some thoughts on Loki. 
and sort of the perception of Loki in the modern day. Oh, uh, yeah. There are some takes to be uh, had. <laughs> not, well, I'm, in, I'm not even speaking in the Marvels, and I'm think, speaking in the mythological sense of there's a long academic history of trying to connect Loki to Satan. And That's weird. <laughs> sort of Norse mythology is one of those mythologies that I don't like. It's one of those ones that got. Is, is it because is he like associated with like the bad guy god of Norse mythology? Um, like is that is that what it is? So it's it's difficult. It's because a lot of sort of ancient practices got Christianized in the spread of early Christianity. I think ah. a lot of like um, like Irish Welsh. So, 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 man, well. so man with horns must be Satan. Yeah, but he's also a trickster figure. So there's that aspect. Yeah. Um, also, the one god that's supposed to survive Ragnarok is very probably influenced by the concept of Jesus. Um, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, it's a whole thing. Again, I'm not an academic... I have a passing knowledge, but I do you should, still have... You should become one before our next episode. <laughs> Sir, that is like... Okay-ish. I don't think I... <laughs> in terms of probably recording, I don't think I can do that. You don't know that. You, you, you just haven't tried. Uh, moving on. <laughs> um, so, President Thor goes searching through this cave, and mm. first off, I just... I love... The, there's the... Uh, the one flashback then to young Thor as he goes uh, calling for the God butcher. Um, I love that. Just that one panel. That's com that completely black panel with the white eyes in it of gore. Just, ugh, it's, it's amazing. Um, but young Thor or no, we're playing this alongside a couple different things. We're seeing yeah, all, present all, young three, all three Thors are being paralleled as current Thor goes into the cave. Mm -hmm. Um, Importantly, then, uh, old Thor is being consumed by the by the darkness of these guard dogs. Um, present Thor finds another god that is hiding away in this cave that is very much aware of Thor's reputation when it comes to gore. Um, says that uh, uh, he blames Thor. That it says that like gods are dying right now because of him. As young Thor in, in the flashback is also being consumed by the blackness of these uh, these like guard dogs. This this black magic power that gore has um and the last panel of the issue is especially effective as uh, mjolnir drops from present thor's hand um it's uh oh it's so good i love it but anyway or no, i guess that's meant to be old thor isn't it uh oh no 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 does he does he have mjolnir at that point yeah, i'm not sure who that's it's it's, be, it's old it's old thor because it's the line is, is down to the very last one that would make sense. Okay. Um, gotcha. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, transitioning us into issue four. Which is the first one where old Thor actually finally gets uh, some, some front and center time. Um, which is nice. Uh, he also gets the cover, which is cool. Um, yes. Yeah, thousands of years from now in Asgard. Um, old Thor is kind of getting his ass kicked. Um, and, and there are some great... Once again, some Aaron just crushes the the sort of like inner thoughts, these musings of all these Thors, um, as a, yeah, as a you really get the, you get, you get this sense from old Thor of just total regret for what he's done. Um, mm -hmm. well, yeah, because it takes that idea that, um, that, that other God was saying to present Thor about, you know, if it, God's dying right now because of him, because of something that Thor did in his past, that, that gore is now killing even more than before. Um, and also the idea here that gore will not let Thor die. Um, that yeah. Thor has to be the last one that gore kills. Um, it's this brilliant idea. Oh, I love it. Um, like, and the dogs just, so, so he's like, his own kingdom has become a cage, um, which is terrifying. Again, terrifying. Um, yeah. And then we get more of of of, of present Thor, yeah. And it turns out that this god is just he's just hiding, uh, um, you know, is is terrified of being butchered, and 
we don't see the torture, but we really do get a sense that Gore is a torturer first and foremost. Like, yeah, yeah, you're already sort of getting, getting an idea of the dead bodies you saw before, but you get the feeling that the, 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 this other god that Thor is talking to um, is kind of just in the middle of that process. Um, he's, you know, there there are marks all over his body. He's literally crying as he's talking to Thor. Like it's it's a it's a rough moment. Um, but Thor takes this other god with him uh, back to Omnipotent City, finds the old librarian uh, from before dead, and other, uh, more of these like black guard dogs uh, surrounding the place, and we then cut back to the past. Uh, past Thor, young Thor, whatever we call him, um, is now in chains and face to face with Gore the God Butcher. Um, you get the feeling also that, well, one thing that I also love about Gore is that Gore is not a character that is completely unstoppable. The fact that he does face Thor throughout three very important periods of his life um, means that Gore is is technically defeated at some point each time, um, that he is still finding flaws within himself. Um, yeah, so you, well, it's also interesting because Gore is not all knowing, like yeah, yeah, it's heavily like implied. It, it, it's outright stated. He doesn't know the Norse pantheon, like mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, and so, like, he's actively annoyed at Thor in this moment, like annoyed that he was not able to kill him. Um, it's where this sort of like personal vendetta between uh, that Gore has against Thor is uh, is is started, and I love that idea. And, and um, Thor remains loyal to his family and his people. Like he's not going to give up the names of the gods that he knows. Yeah, the um, idea is that like one of the things that Gore does is you know he will he will spare a god temporarily if they are willing to give up their um uh their 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 friends and 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 other gods. Um, it's a great idea. I love that. that um, um, and then. With present Thor, I think there's a line here that characterizes just how bad Gore is, and it is this, he can't make me watch anymore. Ugh. Oh, I love it. Gives you chills, because Aaron is doing such a good job of sh- straddling the hyper violence because this is a super violent book oh yeah yeah but it knows and part of it's because of the art as well um uh, rubik's art should not be uh, underestimated Mm -hmm. but it doesn't it's you never feel like the delight a delight in showing the violence and it keeps a lot of the violence off page you see a lot of the aftermath yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Like a lot uh, of the violence you see, I are kind of standard comic book action scenes, mm-hmm. um, which is which is very which is you know very interesting. Um, then as uh, we, we cut forward to um to uh, old Thor, then fighting off more of these guard dogs, these berserkers, the, these as black called. berserkers. Um, um, Thor, uh, old Thor. Yeah, he uses he uses Mjolnir uh, to to like let out this like blast of like lightning energy towards them. Uh, we're seeing all three timelines uh, once again together as young Thor is being tortured and present Thor uh, uh, finds the scroll and he's going to go after Gore specifically now again. Um, and then we see as we begin to close out the issue, we go to Chronix. The Place of Infinity. The where... Palace of Infinity. Palace of Infinity. Jesus, wow, it is early. Fuck, I am... Sorry, the book is far away. The Palace of Infinity, you're correct. Jesus. Um... <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, this is where Gore is currently residing, as he is killing yes. more gods here, uh, using his berserkers to kill everyone in this palace. Uh, um, and bleed their blood into a giant pool. That he seems to be getting stronger from. Um, meanwhile, old Thor is, uh, is, is being, uh, attacked and is, um, is, uh, being stabbed. And as this is, uh, closing out, um, old Thor is met 
by present Thor, who arrives here asking where the Butcher of Gods is. And yeah. that is where issue four closes out. Um, I was curious, actually, because I, I remember when I first read this, I, I loved this moment. Did you know, did you figure at all that these all uh, these these stores would begin to like meet each other. I had when we started talking about if we're ca- calling a place called Chronix, that sounds like hmm, sounds like we're gonna do some time shit. <laughs> yeah, um. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. There is also I don't know if you looked at the, the opening page at all. Um, the the title page on the inside of the cover that says Thor by Jason Aaron um, shows all three of them together. <laughs> Oh yeah, it does. I kind of skipped over that. That's fine. No, that's cool. It, it, it helped the twist, so there's that. Um, anyway, so we go into issue five, our final issue for today. Um, present day, Chronix, once again, the Palace of Infinity. Gore is bathing in the blood of these dead gods, which is just horrifying. I love it. Um, and we go back to 14 billion years ago in the void as Gore sees, witnesses the birth of the first god what a fucking scene <laughs> like oh my god i love that um he goes back to the present day uh he's left like one survivor here in chronix um to sort of like i guess help him in like utilizing this place this this place that exists in yeah that is able to like help you time travel i imagine um uh, so he's kind of like one person alive. He brings back something from this other time. He is um it's it, it's a heart. Yep. What the fuck? This guy, <laughs> this fucking guy. Um but yeah, uh then he um does he kill this last survivor in Chronix? I think he does. Uh well Thor arrives That's it. <laughs> in time. Before we then go to the past. Uh, where Thor where where young Thor is is, is presumably about to be killed by Gore. And when, is being goaded in, like, starting to be like, well, you know, you have to have a sibling that you might hate. There has to be someone, uh, someone that you, um, uh, uh someone that you, that you want, that, that you'd love for me to kill first. Mm-hmm. And because it's integral that we, that when we first started this book, you had Thor with people that care about him and that he genuinely cares about um, because people are coming to his rescue. Yeah. Um, these other Vikings that he took on his journey with him are coming in there. They're going to try to kill Gore for Thor in the name of Thor. Um, it creates this really interesting moment that I think that, you know, that not only is this moment of, and that gets commented on eventually as present Thor is as present Gore is like mocking Thor um, as he's like talking about, you know, all those people that helped Thor survive that day. Um, he doesn't remember their faces. He probably doesn't remember their names, nothing about them. Um, but also I think it comments on this moment of like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to find the right word for it. Um, just like how blindly these other Vikings are willing to follow Thor um, yeah, well, they I find have, the commentary they, they, on that they, super interesting. It, it, I feel I, I could be off the mark because you know I'm really only halfway th- through this first story. It feels like Aaron wants to make a comment on faith mm-hmm. in a very broad sense. Um, well, I mean, he's doing that with Gore to begin with, you know. Yeah, Gore, if but nothing not just else, like, but. Uh, also, just the faith of community, um, mm. if that makes sense. Well, um, I get that, yeah. Like, uh, which is you know, it's a theme I, that that is that is always interesting and fascinating, um, and 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 I love it because um, this this final issue is one that basically ends things, you know. Uh, on a not a great note, um, because Gore in all three cut timelines seems to actually get close to winning by the end, yeah, yeah. Um, um, 
Thor in the past lobs off Gore's a uh, right arm, which it's only I I I'd forgotten about it again. It's only really at that time that you noticed that like you know Gore Gore's right arm was was black. It seemed to be like come from magic. Um, yeah, well, I think so much also just because the art is really clever at never giving you the full picture of Gore. That's um, true. Yeah, yeah, it's a great moment. Um, yeah, so I, that, um, th- yeah, ha- that that's what happened to like Gore in the past. Um, as like Gore does still like get, kill many of Thor's followers. Um, meanwhile, in the present, uh, Gore once again bathes in the uh, in the time pool of blood on Chronix. They don't quite go into how it works, but I kind of love that that it's just kind of unknowable. It's really weird. Um, I mean, we're dealing with blood of literal gods. Yeah. Um, I, I don't. I, think, I imagine you'd be able to time travel if you. I don't in the think blood the blood, blood of, of, gods. Of, of 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 god of god beings is going to act in the same way as the blood of mortals. <laughs> yeah, and so um, um, and so following him is of course present Thor, who goes forward to see his older self. Um, asks you know where is Gore? They they begin fighting off the berserkers together, um, and Thor is like you know. Uh, Thor, young yeah, present Thor realizes that, like you know, the God Butcher hasn't like just arrived. He's been here for nine hundred years, and he has been busy with these really dead, blank shots of other planets and places where presumably Gore has killed so many, damn near every god by this point. Because um, we end is- with this line of. Uh- the first day of a new age of freedom, the day all my dreams come true. And that is where it ends. Yes. Um, my God. <laughs> Ooh, um, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. You texted me once again for like, I think the third Marvel block in a row that it's your favorite book that we've covered so far in the Marvel stuff. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Aaron kind of hits hits it swinging, and I hope he maintains it at least till the end of this arc. I I, I believe he does, um, but that is of course up for you to decide. I have um, to actually read what's coming next. Um, yeah, yeah, but because uh, I have not. Um, also, I I am I think this is also just the perfect story to tell in five issues. Like, oh, totally. Yeah, I could not imagine this being stretched out to much longer than that um like i feel like that would that would just start adding filler like aaron's a master of plotting this yeah Um, yeah um i think uh because you probably saw the way it's collected in this version uh the issue six cover and the probably the first page of issue six um yes we're getting we're getting into gore's backstory um yes so i'll be curious to see how, how you take that um because obviously it's going to get into why gore does what he does um and of course you know building up the final five issues where um where we're going to end things off so yes end things off and uh uh, yeah and then we'll leave that alone for the time being so but um, but 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 not not too terribly long not terribly long because yeah we we can talk about it now um i wasn't going to do the second marvel block for a while but after our last episode for planet hulk you said hey could we like bump up some marvel episodes because i gotta see where the fuck this goes um so like, we're gonna, yeah we're, we're gonna have a marvel block a little earlier than planned uh our second one uh, it's gonna be shorter uh our, our so basically there was gonna be a second marvel block towards the end of the leading up to like episode 100 sort of um not quite as like 85 to 98 95 i think or 80, 86 to 95 i think yeah um, so uh, that is now going to going to split in two, into two smaller five episode blocks. So that'll now be episodes seventy one to seventy five. Uh, will be our second Marvel block that uh, will mostly be continuing things that we began uh, in our first yes. one here. So and then and then so the cool. third Marvel block will be way down the road. Yeah, in... although I, I, it does split it up better. You know, we won't have super long DC blocks in between, which will be nice. Yes, yes, um, because we are trying to integrate Marvel better. Um, yes, and we're we're working on it. We're getting there. 
we're, we're, we're becoming better people. Yes. Um, so <laughs> you're becoming better. I'm the one that's influencing you to do that's better. That's true. That's true. And hey, I'm glad you. I'm glad you're forcing me to do this. Yes. If, if I'm being honest. So yeah. Uh, but we have ten episodes of DC coming up. Episodes sixty-one to seventy. Um, but we still have one more Thor episode to get through before then. So be sure to join yes. us then. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. But we did do some adapted material for this. Sort of. Not sort of. quite. Basically, last time I was like, hey, so this is the this is the comic that inspired Thor Love and Thunder. We should watch that. But I was like, you know what might help if you've seen more than one Thor movie? Yes. Um, so we decided um, we're going to watch all four Thor movies. It also helps that we're doing shorter books for these two episodes. Yes. So, Thank we, have God more it's so we have more time for adapted material. Uh, so across these two episodes, we're watching all four Thor movies, or at least you are. I've seen them yes. a fair few times. Um, so uh, you watched for this first one, you watched Thor and Thor the Dark World. Tell us all about it, Jacob. So um, Thor is actually pretty. It's solid. It's good. It's, it's one of my film. favorite MCU movies. Fuck you. <laughs> it's so good. It's 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 very good. Um, it, it, it's Thor gets a com- pretty much a very nice character arc. Uh, uh, Chris Hemsworth is really charming in the role. Natalie Portman's good. Cat uh, Dennings is wonderful. Tom, Hidd- Ooh, Tom Hiddleston. Tom Hiddleston is. Oh, dude, him in that first movie in particular, that fucking scene when he's confronting Odin about his uh, about where he comes from, fucking perfect. is really good. Oh. Oh uh, my Anthony, God. Hop- so good. Anthony Hopkins actually seems to care about the material. He um, does. He does. Which, oh, wait until yeah, you see what they do with him in Ragnarok. Yeah, can't <laughs> say. Well, here's the thing. You can't really say that about the Dark World. Oh, and oh, but 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 I repeat, wait until you see Ragnarok. <laughs> it's mm, yeah. Um needless, needless, needless to say, he's not in Love and Thunder. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> Kenneth Branagh is directing. Kevin uh, Brenner is a damn good director for that first. He's one. he's he's a good director. I I think he uses too many Dutch angles, and I think he could have done the climax a bit better. I think just kind of making it this sort of like almost cage match though between like, like this really just like brutal almost fist fight between these two brothers, um, making it really personal. And I, th- I think really works. Uh, Maybe. Personal. Oh, also Idris Elba. Idris Elba's in the movie, and he's oh great. he's so good, um, so so good. Yeah. Um, it's 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 a very fun. It I also has it, one of my favorite Stan Lee cameos. Oh yeah, the Stan so, Lee cameo is great. I think it just it, it helps that like the MCU hasn't fully established, so the movie has a decent chunk of freedom to do its own thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, While also randomly having Hawkeye there for a scene. <laughs> yeah, Hawkeye's there, and and uh, was this the first time you have Clark Gregg as Coulson? In no, one of Col- Coulson's been there since Iron Man. Right, 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 right. He was there in almost every Phase One movie except for, I think, Incredible Hulk. Was he in Captain America? I think he's he's I think he's one of the guys at the start of Captain America. If not, then maybe he's missing from that too. But yeah. if nothing else, he's an Iron Man one and two and Avengers. Um, right, right, right. Um, and Thor. So obviously and Thor, and and you know, it's it's solid. It's it's very good. It's a very simple arc of Thor becoming worthy for the hammer obviously a thing that kind of defines the character in the comics um i actually quite like the costume of thor oh, yeah in, in the movie it's, it's 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 really it's really good um uh and, I, like the, I like the attention given to the warriors three in that, in that yes first movie. W- w- what especially helps it's it's a little crowded in places um with a fairly large supporting cast I think it does help. What what helps in that is that it's it is one of the early MCU movies, so it's not focusing on here's a large cast and also the rest of the MCU. It's more yeah. Here's a large cast, and it can tell its own story. It it doesn't it doesn't like all you need is that little post credit scene and Shield's involvement in the film actually makes sense. Um, (laughs) Yeah, yeah. uh, What also helps it is that um, a lot of it is shot on location and actual sets oh like, also we've neglected to mention papa skarsgård as yeah. uh, as a uh, as uh, dr selvig yeah yeah <laughs> he's 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 uh what, stella stella that's his name stella, stella skarsgård. skarsgård um yeah <laughs> yeah pa- pa- papa skarsgård father of the big one of the biggest acting families ever um yes a, a king <laughs> i love him um, um yeah he's great uh yeah it's 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 solid it's good 
it's good as especially it's good as a standalone like yeah yeah and then the dark world happens and then the dark world happens and the dark world is shit like first off <laughs> first off it just as a movie it 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 looks so bad dude i <laughs> I I always just jokingly refer to it as as Thor the greenish gray world in my head because yeah, it's, it's, it's like green, it's this, gray, and I brown, and yeah, I don't know what it is, man. It's uh, it's clear they don't know what they want to do with the human characters. It's clear yeah, they, yeah, like and also like their big idea for the Thor sequel is basically just trying to do the opposite of the first movie where Thor was uh, a fish out of water on earth. Now what Jane is a fish out of water in Asgard. Like, except here's the problem. Here's the problem. <laughs> Jane doesn't get nearly as much focus. Like, oh no. God no. But she does. She does hold that there infinity stone. Doesn't she? <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh man. It's uh, Thor the Dark and then, World, and then it fucking wastes Christopher Eccleston as if it didn't have yeah, like, enough problems. <laughs> you you have Christopher Eccleston playing the villain who I don't really understand his motivations. Yeah, like, it's mm. like yeah. so much of the movie is just <laughs> is just this person has to fill the role. Yeah, like the only like. Even Natalie Portman is has like a fairly rocky time of it. Yeah, oh. I, 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 the saving, you, the this saving is, grace of the film for me, I think, is Hemsworth and Hiddleston working off of each other. They they're good. Uh, Dennings, oddly enough, it knows how to knows how to deliver some of this dialogue. Mm-hmm. Um, um, the portrayal of uh, the death of Thor's mother, I think, is one of the highlights of the film it, as well. Is good. It's just um, it's not a very good film. It's it's bad. It's it's bad. It's. Um, I will say though, also like it's maybe also one of the things is that's maybe softened on it over time is knowing what came later. <laughs> maybe is, I don't is, know is very possibly what helped it. So I don't. Know. Um, but also like so it was directed by a guy called Alan Taylor, mm-hmm. who direct who is more of a television director. Mm-hmm. Uh, he directed uh, some early Game of Thrones. Um. And he's not a bad director, but early, I, I don't think he works very well with the sheer amounts of CGI that is in this film. Oh, like, most definitely. Oh my god, there is so much CGI. Yeah. Also, Natalie Portman should be okay giving dealing with a bad script. She was in <laughs> she, all three she, Star Wars she's, Yeah, she survived the prequels, yeah. Um, she survived George Lucas dialogue. <laughs> I survived being in three George Lucas movies, and all I got was this crappy T-shirt. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, it's the Thor: of The Dark World. It's also a film. I watched it two nights ago. I think. Yeah, two mm-hmm. nights ago at time of recording. I, v- I barely remember it. Like, like. I and it wasn't like I wasn't paying attention. It's just not memorable. It is it is two hours that I will never get back. Um and that is a shame. Um yeah. yeah. At least yeah. at least at least with the next two films, Taika Watiti has a style. Like I suppose I just uh oh, I mm. I think you'll Mm, I don't know what you'll make of it, to be honest, because I have a feeling you're going to like it more than The Dark World, and I think that may just hurt me a little more inside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's possible. Um, I will say, yeah. I think I like I think I like Love and Thunder more than Dark World. I can't comment. I th- I'll say I'll say that. Um, I can't comment. Here's yeah. the thing. I know that Ragnarok also kind of adapts bits of Planet Hulk, and I'm like, mm. yeah, that that may be what kills you. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want Watiti doing that. Like, yeah, Taika, yeah. you can like, mm. but I'm also like, I don't really want to see Taika Watiti adapt the God Butcher because because <laughs> also Taika Waititi, <laughs> and that's not meant to be like no, a it's, it's on it's, Watiti. No, it's just not his style. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. That said, I mean, like the best like probably the best scene in the movie is is one of the more like the comic scenes in my opinion um yeah yeah 
Um, anyway, but yeah, um, that was that was that, that was the adapted material. Um, that was that. That was uh, that was Thor the God Butcher, uh, and that is that is the end of this episode. Hey, hey, we did it. Um, we did it. It's brief. Yeah, I, it's still not our shortest episode, I think, um, which is a little weird. But I think what what is our shortest? Is it one in Rome? Probably. Uh, it's. I think it's when in Rome is like an hour sixteen. I think. Yeah, this is definitely longer than that. This is hour twenty. So yeah. Um, anyway, um, but yeah, uh, otherwise, make sure to follow us on socials and all that. Our link trees are in the description below. Um, uh, promotions, I know you have your blog. Yes, I can't. Uh, uh, God, what's uh, we just did? Uh, I'm, 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 I, I did. You, we do this every time. Why do you? <laughs> what is so hard about promoting the same shit every time? It's, <laughs> look, it's because I don't know what my blog is doing right now because i am in between series that i'm reviewing um i'm in between a couple things things are happening review uh, breaking bad no some people do it some people some people have screwed up my reading order this month joey oh, that, you could you could choose to read that book whenever the fuck you want jacob uh, shush, 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 shush. yeah but uh, it's fun to blame you. Um, also, <laughs> I'm reviewing Star Trek week by week. Um, That's true. That's with Joey, true. We but just did the Tholian Web. The which... Tholian Web. And next week, we have Plato's Stepchildren, which isn't especially worth noting. Um, uh, oh, so wouldn't, wouldn't be worth noting because, you know, it comes out almost a week after this episode does. But it's worth noting because it's an important episode of, episode of Star it, Trek. It is, so... it is one of those really big famous ones because it's one of the early examples of a thing on television. Yeah, um, so if you don't know what that is... is I don't know what rock you've been living under. Yeah. Um, <laughs> otherwise, uh, check out other things on the channel. Uh, we have, uh, as always, we're reviewing Star Trek uh, alongside Jacob's uh, blogs and all that. Um, me and my brother are watching through Star Trek for the first time. Uh, R2BD is coming out. We have uh, the third episode coming out, I think, in a few weeks. So that'll be fun. Um, we're also uh, Breaking Brian should hopefully be resuming in the near future. We're finally getting back on that. So that's lovely. Uh, and we only have two videos left of that to come out. I can't be sure of exact, of exact, the exact dates i can fucking speak um exact dates uh, and also fresh face one shots uh coming later this week i know there's at least superman but i'm not I sure i think wonder woman sure. the same week probably so check those out they're coming out and also brave and the bold we regularly do every month so i think the brave and the bold will either be next week possibly the week after Possibly I, the week after. I'm not sure on release date. We don't know things. Um, all right. Uh, I think that about does it. Um, thank you guys so, so much for watching. Um, and I guess until next time, this has been Joey Morgan. And Jacob Licklider. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.